Good evening. My name is Tom Hawkins. I'm a guest lecturer in the applications of statistics. Sometimes I even get paid for it. I was reading this book on the physics of the universe, and in this one part, the author wrote that for some models of the universe to work, there have to be extra dimensions. And I got really excited. Because what if extra dimensions was like a box of carnival mirrors in the basement, and when I eat too much at dinner, I could take out width and replace it with a hidden dimension? How about this dimension? Does it make me look too fat? But let me get to the point. For the sake of this presentation, I want you to assume that this point has zero dimensions, no height, no width. Obviously, if it had no height or no width, you wouldn't even be able to see it. So for the sake of this presentation, that is zero dimensions. If you extend that point out into a line, you have one dimension. And then if you extend it again, perpendicular to that line out into a plane, you have two dimensions. You can do a few things with two dimensions. There is some rotation involved. For example, you can rotate the triangle on the right around a point into the triangle on the left. But you can't do this with all situations and all triangles. Sometimes you can have symmetrical triangles that you can't rotate around a point. For that, you must rotate them around an axis. But to rotate triangles around an axis, it requires a third dimension for that transition to take place. That third dimension is a line, it's, you extend that plane perpendicular into the third dimension. And the third dimension can be terribly freeing. There are a lot of things you can do in the third dimension, but you can't do everything in the third dimension. For example, these shapes, obviously symmetrical, but you can't rotate the shape on the right into the shape on the left around a point or an axis. You have to rotate it around a plane, and that's just not possible in three dimensions. You would need a fourth dimension. So if we look at our journey so far from a point up into a cube, and we gather some data on each of those, the number of vertices and the number of edges, we can use that information to develop formulas. And in these formulas, D is the number of dimensions. So we've generalized those shapes. And we can use this information to determine what would a hypercube look like, a cube in the fourth dimension. It would have 16 vertices and 32 edges, like we see at the top. Now, I have to caveat this because this is a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional model of a four-dimensional object. <laughs> Woefully inadequate. The one on the bottom is the four-dimensional model unfolded into three dimensions, which makes it even more confusing. Now, you may have heard that time is the fourth dimension. And yes, time can be a fourth dimension. But time can really be joined with any number of dimensions, as in this model, where time is joined with two spatial dimensions to draw this model. Einstein's theory of relativity explained a lot of things. But what did not explain was Maxwell's theory of electromagnetism. So how to reconcile these two theories, just not possible in three dimensions? Enter a Theodore Kaluza who found that if you extend Einstein's equations into a fourth dimension, you can incorporate Maxwell's electromagnetism. Where is it? Well, Oscar Kaluza found out. He said, if it's very, very, very small, curled up, that's where it is. Well, what does that mean? If you look at the, the image of the tightrope walker from a distance, it looks like the, the wire he's walking on is one dimension. But if you look up close, you can see there's a tiny curled up extra dimension there. In the, Plato, in, in the Republic, Plato wrote about prisoners that were chained up to a wall, and all they could see was the shadows of people above them moving. And those shadows were their entire world, just those two-dimensional representations. But when they were finally freed and saw the three-dimensional beings that were creating those shadows, they couldn't reconcile it with what they'd been seeing this whole time. So it was very difficult for us to imagine four dimensions from our experience in three dimensions. There's a great literature of dimensionality starting with Edwin Abbott's Flatland in 1884, which was written as a romance novel. Who knew that could be done? And my favorite, The Fourth Dimension Simply Explained, which was a collection of essays put together by Scientific American. And on through culture, we have a painting by Salvador Dali, where Christ is crucified against an unfolded hypercube, or tesseract, and the Grand Arch in La Défense, Paris, which was modeled on a hypercube. 
and most recently with Captain America and the Avengers, where they had something in the movie that they said was a Tesseract, but was worked more like a magic cube or something, did not make any sense at all. <laughs> but I'm old school, so I'll just say, may the fourth be with you. <laughs>